Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to fully customize the lock screen and the front cover screen on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 7. This is going to be a complete step-by-step -step guide. Every tap is going to be shown on screen so you can follow along with me. By the end of the video, your Z Fold 7 will look better, feel faster, and work smarter. It'll be completely personal and styled just for you. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. And go ahead and leave any thoughts or questions in the comments section as well. I'll be walking you through how I personally customize the wallpapers, clock styles, always on display, add widgets to both the lock screen and the cover screen, and so much more. Plus, I'll show you how to make your notifications look futuristic with brief pop-ups and my personal favorite, edge lighting effects that glow around your screen. I will also be posting a part two video where I'll be customizing the main screen and using the Good Luck app to add some more advanced customization tweaks to all of the Z Fold 7 screens. Before we start customizing, there are a few things to set up. First, you wanna make sure your Z Fold 7 is updated to the latest software. Samsung does keep improving and adding new customization features, so you don't wanna miss out on the newest tools. The next thing I normally do is choose some wallpapers. For this tutorial, I'll be using some bright neon wallpapers, and I've already prepared some and saved them in my gallery so I can apply them on the lock and cover screens. I found that bright wallpapers look amazing on the Z Fold 7 screen, and the neon colors pop and glow beautifully on the screen. Okay, so first we're going to open the lock screen editor. To do this, you open system settings, you scroll down and select lock screen and AOD, and on the very bottom, just go ahead and tap Edit Lock Screen. And great, now we're in the Lock Screen Editor. I'm going to begin with wallpapers first and we'll be choosing a neon one with a dark background because it hides that annoying camera cutout as well. Of course, if you like, you can choose to have the same wallpaper on the lock screen and the front cover screen to stay consistent. But for this tutorial, I'll be experimenting a little and having two different wallpapers one on the lock screen and another on the front cover screen. Um, before I set the wallpaper, I will show you some of the other wallpaper options that are already preloaded in the Z Fold 7 that you can choose. So let's go ahead and tap wallpapers on the top left corner. So you can choose to use any of the featured ones. You can create one with AI. You can pick a graphical or colors. And if you're someone who gets bored of the same wallpaper every day and you don't want to stick with a single one, you can choose to use Samsung Wallpaper Services. And this feature lets your phone refresh wallpapers dynamically, and it's a great way to keep your lock screen fresh without lifting a finger. So if you scroll down on the very bottom, you can go ahead and tap Wallpaper Services and then tap Dynamic Lock Screen. If you select the settings here, you can see that there are a lot of different choices. We have landscapes, plants, life, dogs, cats, animals, art, food, desserts, or special. You just go ahead and download them, and then you can select up to five categories. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my wallpaper now, but I'm gonna go back to the gallery section. So I hit the back arrow two times, scroll back up to the gallery. I have mine in my albums and in wallpapers. I'm going to select this padlock here and select done. Then you want to go ahead and select done on the top and the lock screen wallpaper is set. Now let's move on to customizing the clock. Most people leave the font a default white, but you can actually adjust it a lot. I was actually going to leave it white as well, but I'm going to try a bright pink to match the padlock. I think it's going to pop a lot more. So in the lock screen editor, we're going to go ahead and tap on the clock. And you can pick from a variety of the number styles on the top row here. Now I'm going to stick with the second one here. And then you can adjust the degree of boldness. And you can make it really thin or really bold. And I'm going to go kind of like right in the middle there. And I'm also going to change the font color. So you can choose solid colors, you can choose some gradient options, or you can hit the big one on the end and that shows all the colors. And I'm gonna go ahead with a bright pink 
and then you select done. You can also go ahead and select the style tab and you can choose from a variety of different styles and options for the way that the date and the time is displayed. As you can see here, and I'm going to go ahead with this one because for some reason it just kind of stands out the most with me. And then if you want below there, you can toggle the weather information to be on so it shows the temperature outside. And you can toggle the date above the clock to be off if you want it below the time or above, you would have it toggled on. Now you can see how the pink digits stand out and almost glow against that dark background. It really pops more now. If you want something stylish, you can also go ahead and try the other font styles, and you can experiment with other colors as well, too. The next thing that I usually customize are the app shortcuts. You get two slots, one on the left and one on the right. These make the lock screen more useful without being too cluttered. I usually put flashlight on the left so it's quick to access when I need it and camera on the right so I can launch straight into taking a photo without unlocking the phone. These two shortcuts are quick, practical, and they always come in useful for me. Of course, you can change them to notes, calculator, or any app that suits your needs. And as you can see, the shortcuts sit cleanly at the bottom and against the dark background, the icons look sharp. You can customize these app shortcuts while you're still in the taskbar editor and you just select the shortcut so I'm going to go ahead and start with the bottom left one and I'm going to put the flashlight there and since the camera is already in the bottom right I don't need to go ahead and switch that one at all so now let's go ahead and add some lock screen widgets widgets on the lock screen can be really powerful and come in super handy so while you're in the lock screen editor you tap the widgets button and select the widgets you want to add. So first I usually add upcoming alarm and that is under the clock section. The next widget I typically will add is clock, uh, calendar. And there's a couple varieties that you can choose but I usually just do the today one. And the other one that I tend to add is weather. And you have a couple other options there again, but I usually will do the current temp and weather. If they are not in the order that you like, you can just hold down on the widget you want to move and drag it where you want. Of course, you can add more widgets here and in any order that works for you. And if you decide you want to remove a widget, you just go ahead and tap on the minus sign there and it'll remove it for you. Now be sure to select done when you have everything done here so you don't have to redo it all again. The next item I customize is the lock screen notifications. Go ahead and open system settings, select notifications, and then select lock screen. And here you can choose to have it as cards, icons, or dots. And I usually go with the icons only. Then I tap the back arrow and I select hide content while locked. And right now it's set to show always, but I'm going to switch it to hide when locked. This way your lock screen shows which apps have sent notifications, but not the details. These settings keep your personal information private and make your lock screen look cleaner as well. Now let's add some style to the notifications. For style, I'm going to enable brief notifications with edge lighting. This is one of my favorite customizations. Set this customization up. You open System Settings, select Notifications, and then tap Notification Pop-Up Style, and switch it from Detailed to Brief. And then right down below, go ahead and select Add Lighting Effect. There are a couple variations and choices that you can choose. You can choose Basic, you can choose Heart, Fireworks, Eclipse, Echo and Spotlight. And for each of those, you can actually change the color of the way that it appears on the edge of the screen. But for this one, I'm going to go ahead and choose Glitter because it is by far my favorite out of all of them. Now, when a notification arrives, instead of a big bulky banner, the screen edges will pulse with a glowing light every time a notification arrives. 
The pink text that I chose and the neon lighting work perfectly together to create that futuristic vibe, and it makes your phone feel alive. If you tap the advanced tab here, you can change the transparency of the edge lighting. You can change the width so it goes really wide. I usually go with wide. And you can also change the duration for how long that it flashes on your screen. Next up is customizing the always on display. To do this, we're going to go back into the system settings. We're going to scroll down and tap lock screen and AOD. Then go ahead and toggle on the always on display and then tap it. You can choose to toggle on for the lock screen wallpaper, which is what I'll be doing. And you can also choose if you want the now bar on or off. I'm actually turning mine off. And then let's go ahead and tap when to show. You can choose to have it as tap to show, auto, always, as scheduled, or for new notifications. Show always does drain more battery, but tap to show or show as scheduled saves power. So show as scheduled, you can set like a schedule for when you want it to do that. But I usually go ahead and leave it at tap to show. And I don't really have that many battery issues. But go ahead and choose whatever is best for you. Boom! Look at that lock screen. That turned out awesome. Next, I'll show you how to customize the cover screen. All right, now let's customize the cover screen. Now we're going to do the same steps we did for the lock screen, but this time we will select home screen instead of lock screen. So you just hold down in an empty spot on your home screen. Then select wallpaper and style on the bottom. You can do this in system settings too, but this way is much quicker. Now tap change wallpapers and choose any of the wallpaper features you want or choose one from your gallery. So I'm gonna go ahead and select one from my gallery. It's in my albums and wallpapers and I'm gonna select this one right here. Then go ahead and tap done. So it automatically checks both boxes, the lock screen and the home screen. So make sure that you uncheck the box for lock screen so it doesn't apply this wallpaper on the lock screen. And then click next. Next, I'm actually going to open the home screen settings on the cover display and adjust just a couple little settings in there. Okay, so to get into the home screen settings, you just go ahead and hold down on an empty space on the cover screen and select settings on the bottom. I recommend four by six for the cover screen and setting the app screen grid to four columns. It does keep the icons large enough for easy tapping, but still fits plenty of apps. Another thing I always adjust is changing the app icon badges to dots instead of the numbers. And you can also choose to adjust any other settings in here as well, but I'll just show you that for now. So you just scroll down to the bottom and you tap app icon badges. And here you just go ahead and switch it to dot. And that's it. Customize your cover screen a little bit more. You can add some widgets to the top, such as weather, calendar, and now brief. And then you can put your must have apps on the bottom like camera, notes, and YouTube. To add widgets, all you do is hold down on your home screen here. Go ahead and select widgets and choose which ones that you want to add on there. Um, I usually do now brief and you can choose the size of it. So you just select that and select add. And then I also like to add the calendar on. So you hold down again, select widgets and then find the calendar. And then you can select which one you like. I usually do a small one to keep it minimal and select add. If you need to move any and reposition them, you just hold down on them and you can move them where you like, like so. You can also change the icons here on the bottom to whatever preference and have the app button on the end as well. And that can be set up in settings. There are two screens that you can customize. So you can make one for two different modes. So if you like a clean look, you can have it like this. And then you can have a productivity look on the next window. And usually here, I just set up all my creator apps on the second screen.
that's it for part one. With bright neon wallpapers, edge lighting, and all the other customizations, the Z Fold 7 looks futuristic while still staying productive. Please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and leave any questions or thoughts in the comments section as well. Thanks for watching, and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!